Hey everyone, and welcome to another thrilling episode of Slime Down the Hole with Dan and Friends. Just kidding. It's Candela Obscura. Brought to you by Nickelodeon. <laughs> Brought to you by Nickelodeon. Um, golly, we had a bang. Gosh, we had a banger of a funeral. Does anyone want to talk about it? Oh, geez. <laughs> Does anyone um, want to talk about this kick heck funeral we just went to? I, yes, there was a funeral for Ronson, who died, uh, his partner Johnson. I had a really cool line, I wanted to say to Johnson. Though. It was the shadow as Ronson. Yeah. Shadow as Ronson. Uh, Johnson was in a trance, pulled a gun, tried to shoot someone. Uh, we stopped him. Uh, we picked up a cube. This cube got white hot. It then exploded. <laughs> Choking up everyone. Oh. Um, it exploded. A uh, spirit appeared. Uh, the spirit grabbed the mayor. The mayor was then sucked into this. Her, name was, her name's Iodine. Iodine? <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> no. No, it's not. It's Iomine. You're <laughs> messing with me. Um, I mean, I mean, you're a mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah grabbing the mayor. Um, at that time, Thaddeus then made a vial of slime, uh, sticky slime. We are going down this hole. We jump down as a group. We're going down now. Um, and then McCoy has a 200 foot rope. I'm just saying. <laughs> the hole was four by the I mean. Uh, hopefully that's <laughs> like the of his skirt. I <laughs> missed <laughs> probably a lot of like actual development stuff, but that was the glitch. Cool. Johnson did actually the didn't he? Yes. Yeah. He was he survived by his yeah. mm-hmm. fellow police officers. And they're taking care of him. So. Yeah. And they're trustworthy. And hey, you know, just a, a little peek, an initial peek behind the curtain of just the fun of, of building off Candela Obscura and successes and fails. Successful roles the difference between a Johnson in one place or several. <laughs> to quote the Joker. Um, mm-hmm. So you have a good friend and his name is Johnson and he's alive now and he loves you. All right. Um, let's get started with uh, this um, session as we slide glute down this hole. For a while, we're just... Um, what does it sound like to glute down this hole, <laughs> Thaddeus? <laughs> Good. So picture that for... Gross. 200 uh, feet. 17 minutes <laughs> as you just slowly slide along. For <laughs> You're the first one down the hole? Oh! Yeah, so uh, uh, the gel just slows you down. You didn't... Like drink something that made you literally like feather Correct. Fall. Yeah, I I made like a, a sticky pathway all the way down that hole so that we could use that to lower, increase the friction. Okay. And lower our falling rate. Great. Well, you're coming down one after the other. Yep. And each of you, one after the other, is going to make a control roll yep. as you pop out of this hole. Right. There's it's going to be a ten foot drop, which isn't horrific, but it is something. Is this at risk of a uh, body mark, would you say? Uh, who's to say? Um, you had a mixed success. Huh? That's a four. That's, yes. That's a mixed success. What, what if happens I... to me, though? Oh, you're going to take a body mark, but you... Can I make a dodge roll? You're going to land in a roll. Will you let me have a rope, or is it too too long? Uh, sure. I mean, I don't throw the... Sure. I would have tied the rope. And I would have suggested that we go one by one, did we? Or well, like, and tie the rope to different people as they go down, but maybe not. I think, oh, he slooped right down. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to ask him that again or modify it too much. That's but, fair. Um, I did say I had a rope. I think I think it's really funny that everyone, like, sloop, 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 and McCoy, like, very, like, yes, surgically, yeah, like, ties on a rope, slides yeah. down. Like, that's funny to me. So. Okay. If I have nothing in control, I roll one, or I roll two, you roll and, two take and take the lower. lower. Is that just to, like, add an insult to injuries? Yeah. Is that the point of rolling, too? I think so. Well, yeah. Well, I guess. I don't know. Nice. Four. Oh, is that bad? Okay. No, you, Six to the four. You both kind of do a tuck and roll that you, it tweaks your ankle a little bit, but not too bad. So you each just take a body. Hooray. Oh, gosh. I do take a body from it? Is that your fourth body, Wade? Uh, third. Because she healed him. Yeah. I oh. thought you only took a mark if it was three, two, or one. What? Don't you only take a mark? No, that's a failure. You have to make success. Oh. Failure, you would have like hurt yourself bad. I rolled a three. Mm-hmm. You rolled a three. Okay, so you will take uh, two body as you just kind of face plant into the. <laughs> he just well, got a scar from going down this hole. I mean, it was I. Did, I took again, a body mark earlier, right? I didn't say this. It's yeah, a low stakes roll because you're not dying from a, a you know ten foot drop. 
I guess you could, but... I am, apparently. <laughs> How many marks is that? Two, to make me four. Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah, you're gonna... You're knocked out. <laughs> you're not dead, though. Wait, no, we can, uh, we, we can save him. We got this. <laughs> oh, we can just scare <laughs> you! We got this. Nobody left behind! <laughs> I like that Matthew McCoy with our 200 foot rope. <laughs> no, nobody left behind me. Okay, so, wait, wait, wait. So. <laughs> Stop the recording, let's restart. <laughs> I told you to use the rope! Stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thaddeus went down. <laughs> He popped out. He <laughs> hits the ground and is now motionless. So wait, 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 wait. He hits the ground with a. <laughs> wait, out. I cannot believe it. I could rec. I mean, oh, this is funny. I could rec climb and say, in the moment of calm, after mm-hmm. he took the body mark to hitting Elias, before we went down, I tried to patch him up. Is that too much right, Connor? I, I think that's a little bit too much. It's okay, going to be okay. It's going to be okay. All right, let's just... Let's <laughs> just <laughs> Are we making a narrative? Okay. It's not going to be okay. <laughs> Try as we might to weave a horror narrative. I am the DM, so it. this is just a comedy. I'm for it. And so we have... <laughs> I'm Thaddeus' back. motionless body. The two of you... Slapping him in the face. Yeah, Ox and Wade tuck and roll out into this chamber. Um, and then gracefully Florence slowly <laughs> descends the room. I see Thaddeus <laughs> like, oh. He's twitching his arms. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to help him, but we're obviously making oh it worse. Yeah. Try and wake him up. I use falling salts. I'll like okay. patch him up. Golly, golly, geez. what a great start! All right, good start, guys. Good start, guys. Yeah. What's your star? Down the hole. Um, yeah. Okay, we made it down the hole. We've all rolled, and then um, Florence, as you descend, you see that uh, Wade and Ox have have kind of landed, rolled. Gracefully up onto their feet again, a little like, ah, ooh, like it wasn't wasn't perfect, but, and now they are both. Their eyes are locked on. Um, you're in this sort of like it's, you, it's a weird sensation, where, it's you can see what's in the room, but you can't see what's lighting the room. Like as you're coming down, you're like I can see around. And then it's a lit arm on fire. Okay. <laughs> it's a lit arm on fire. The lit arm, the lit arm has, in the 17 minutes it took you to slide down this hole, it, the arm has gone out. There's still kind of like a weird kind of silvery, bluish kind of glow about the room. You do see the light source, and it's um, just kind of sitting against the corner of the wall. There is a girl. She's okay. maybe like seven. Um, seven, eight, age. Um, and she... <laughs> she witnessed this whole... She is, like, eyes raised. Eyes raised. Eyes raised. She's looking at Thaddeus. So um, wait, you get up really slowly. And then... <laughs> 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 I'm her while listening to you, like... <laughs> I'm just so <laughs> little sad. <laughs> She's been staring at arms for 17 minutes. <laughs> She's just looking at you for 17 minutes. Oh, her ass was. the flaming arm. Just... <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Thanks for nothing, little girl. Yeah. She was trapped in this hole for so long. Her first experience was a flaming army that a man just <laughs> falls. That's right. That's She's right. eating it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay. Okay. okay, sorry, I didn't right. mean to interrupt. Yeah. Bug on a windshield. <laughs> so. <laughs> what is mine? Thaddeus just remembers the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> I got this man who like garbage. <laughs> so, Wade and Ox are just looking at this girl sitting in the corner. They're you descend. And she, as you come into frame, she looks up from Thaddeus and kind of watches you slowly descend and land. And she's got her knees up here. She's kind of hugging her knees, just kind of sitting against the corner of the wall. And she says, Bad fall. <laughs> um, Florence is like crouching over Thaddeus, like 
trying to like slap in his cheek a little bit, trying to wake him up. And she says, um, who are you? I turn on my pocket lantern. <laughs> nice. Okay. The room is now a little more, the, the, the glow is a little less eerie. Um, yeah, a little less eerie, and uh, now you just see her. Um, I'm Sarah. Sarah. Do I recognize her? No. Okay. Sarah <laughs> um, There are two people in this <laughs> big wide world of ours and Sarah. <laughs> um, so, um, Florence is kind of like busy, like with Thaddeus, and so um, she kind of like looks up at Ox and uh, Wade, as if to say, like, and looks at the little girl. She's kind of hesitant, like she's distracted by helping Thaddeus. <clears throat> I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Sound weird when I say this. I'm going to inspect the little girl to see if there's anything weird or out of the ordinary with her. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> she. No. She. She's just. Uh, I mean, her clothes are not in fashion. It looks like she's just wearing like. A, she looks like she's like cosplaying or something, <clears throat> which I don't think we would know cosplay in the early 1900s. She, she's just wearing a dress that's not at the time. It looks very old okay. dress. Okay. Um, would, would this be like, so now museums have some attire sometimes. Would this be something that I would have seen yeah, before? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. if, if anyone with like a basic like history of how people have dressed in the past, it's like, oh, this is like an old fair. Wade really likes fashion. That's right. <laughs> um, I feel like I would kind of slowly kneel down and approach and maybe take a knee and like put my elbow on my uh, knee and say do you know what uh, date it is? Date? I'm seven. (laughs) Do you know what year it is? Um, uh, Old? What's your name? I'm I'm Sarah. Sarah. Sarah with an H. <laughs> um, Sarah with Sarah S A. I regret asking. S A. It's not important. R A. Sarah. Okay, it's important. Um, have I have I stabilized Thaddeus? Yeah, or just that? Um, yeah. So the the way that getting incapacitated, it's like. Uh, a lot of times it's in the heat of battle and you kind of recover after like <laughs> so, uh, well, a lot of, of times time. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's sleeping pretty fast but not every time yeah, well, he's, he's just snoring we were already in a moment of calm um, yeah I mean it's it's after a little bit of kind of slapping and doing your doctor thing he, he kind of slowly arises again Tell us about your new cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, did your shins blast out of the bottom of your... No, he landed on his face. And so there's some, like, broken cheekbone in his nose. It's definitely... His, his <laughs> and says, well, there's nothing I can do about that. It's like... I don't want to say He's just in, like, a body. Or it says, well, it's not like it's worse. I can persuade anyone of anything! <laughs> Yeah. Watch, I can move my arms! And you believe he can move his arms, but he doesn't. Florence is going to go over to the little girl. Mm-hmm. Very much in, like, uh, practical, like, uh, evaluating. Does she seem to have any kind of injuries or anything that would... Where she's And while she's walking over, she has her bleed detector kind of, like, subtly mm-hmm. out trying to detect. Um... You so the bleed detector and it's like a like dog tags, right? Mm-hmm. So the dog tags are cold, the cl- closer you get to her. And it starts to like uh if you get too close and you kinda sense this too, like within like a couple feet, like if you get closer than that, it starts to actually feel painful to be too close to her. Like the the bleed that emanates from this uh girl is is noticeable enough that it, it's not comfortable. So you want to kinda keep your distance. Um but I, as y'all are looking at her, you do notice that um, she, even though the chamber is dry, everything seems normal, she seems like she just like got out of being fully immersed in water. Like 
like her hair is like wet and it's on her back and her, her clothes seem like wet and kind of hanging. She seems really pale, but you can't tell if that's, she's a ghost. So, I mean, or she's translucent, like a little, little see-through um, and just has this faint glow that's a little more contradicted from the warmth of the, the fire now. But, and then she suddenly goes, 8822. That's the year, 8822. Mom told me, 8822. What year is it now? <clears throat> seven. It's 1907. 1907? Wait, I thought his notes were from the year seven. I read it wrong, I guess. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, wait. No. This says 007. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, oh, seven. I probably meant 1907. <laughs> okay. Pretend that says 1907. It says 1907. It's 1907. Um, so she's 700 years in the future? <laughs> what? Or she's 18, 700 years. 100 years. It said 18, right? 8822. 88, <laughs> what the heck does that mean? <laughs> Thaddeus knows what that means. Um, knows what that means. What is. The, well, okay, so you're the historian, you're the adventurer. Uh-huh. This is something that you would understand. So the, the timeline of everything. We're in the oh, year 207. And we're after the big from, thing that happened. From the moment that She's erased like Old Fair. BC. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, so, so everything post Old Fair. It was like one, two, three, four, and we're in, we're two thousand years after the fall. Okay, of and that probably ended in like nine thousand. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's like, like we don't know what time was like before. Okay, like whatever event wiped the slate clean, right. wiped any trace of whatever before. Okay. Know? Sarah, what are you doing down here? It's weird. I I can remember. Mom told us to wait in our room, and I remember a loud, loud boom, and I remember it was raining inside? But if I... But if I try... <laughs> Patty's going back up the whole film again. Uh, <laughs> when, I tr- when I try to remember past that, it's it's... Nothing. I I can't I can't think past it raining inside and and I just I just can't remember. Where was your home? Oh, uh, I lived at, I I lived in the castle with mom. And who was your mom? What was her name? She was she she was the she let everything. She was very important. I think her name. Well, her full name was Mommy, but I, I like to call her Mommy because I'm a big girl. Mm-hmm. Her full name was Mommy? Yeah. Her advisors call her... Uh, uh, I... Oh, I'm in? I'm in? I'm a... I'm a... I'm a... Yeah. Mom... Mom's... Mom's servants called her... Empress? And... The scary men called her Ayomi. The scary men? Who were they? <laughs> they... I don't like to talk about them. They were mean. They were spooky. They did weird things. They did weird magic tricks. I didn't like them. Well, you're safe now, sir. We're here to stop the scary men. Anything you can tell us about them will help us stop them. I can see that you're a very brave girl. Thank you. Do you know anything else about where those scary men might be now? The scary men went away. They were gone for a long time before before the last thing. I, I hadn't seen the scary men in a long in a long, long time. But but I can show you my room. Would you like to see my room? Yeah. Uh, Florence like looks at the other people to kind of see what they think, and Fox says, "Yeah." Um, do we have any experience with, um... Ghosts? Yeah, like with helping spirits pass on. Who, who among us? Would that be Thaddeus? But, or... Mm. Well, as a cultist, but do we know I that? Would, I would kill people. I would really <laughs> um, help them. Yeah, I would say, like, it's like it's been a Candela thing, and, and pretty... To know. Pretty cliche, like, ghosts have unfinished business. You help solve the business, and the ghost usually fades away after that. We would love to see your room. And I, like, look at the other people to confirm that that my other uh, co-Candela, Candelians. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just this 
like purple black. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just remember, not everyone likes the door. And then she gets up and she runs past and she runs uh, across the room through what you, as you kind of like follow, watch her as she kind of crosses the room. There's no doors in this room except for one, and it's a very kind of sharp archway comes to a point, and there's a um, the, the the edge, the perimeter of the archway has a bunch of what looks like old fair glyphs along the perimeter of the archway, and it's like it seems almost like a pattern, as if the glyphs are repeating. Um, but just goes around the edge of this archway. And she runs through the archway, and when she runs through the archway, the glyphs, like the doorway, uh, fades into being wall again. Like, there's not an opening anymore. Like, it's like solid wall. The archway almost seems to snake away, and it snakes, and it goes faster, 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 and faster, and then it finally settles again. And there are new glyphs, but the glyphs still seem to repeat. And then the, the opaque wall comes back, and now it's an opening again. Limping over, what could possibly go wrong? Claire <laughs> uh, says, wait, wait, wait. Flashback. <laughs> um, Florence is in her room, and she's flipping through, and she goes, well, I guess he wasn't that big of an idiot. Um, the shadow left a key of what I assume are old fair glyphs um, mm-hmm. with the alphabet. And on the other page here, it has from the mural in South Soffit when we were in the, the automatons, the five figures there. He oh, translated, lovers. but he translated their names and he said lovers. And they said no, 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 <laughs> alchemists. So we also have the names of the alchemists here. Mm-hmm. Um, and those names, were likely the scary men, right? Those were likely the scary men. The shadow wondered, how did they have so much power? How does Pyre know so much about them? Is Elias Smoke a descendant? Um, Florence kind of closes the book for a second, and then she opens it, and she, she remembers something else that she read, and she flips to another page. And uh, on the very last page, one of the last pages of the journal, it says, as a scattered thought, what if they never died? Mm. And she closes it, and she's like, cut back to real time. She's sharing this with you guys and speculating. Oh. Could Elias have been one of the alchemists, perhaps the leader, Helam? And she shared with you guys all the names. The names were Lunix, Payek, Rebus, Ghani, and Kelum. Their their goal was to defy death, right? That was like their main quest. That was Eomine's goal, I think. And it was the alchemist's goal to stop her, I thought. Is that correct? I have no idea. Um, I just wrote down the quest to defy death question mark. Um, no idea. Anyway, I can translate the runes. Yes, great. Um, so you see um, that the archway says pain. <gasps> what did it say before? Do I am I able to do me <coughs> to remember what it uh, said? No, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, before it said fear. Oh. Well, it says pain and previously fear. <laughs> Thoughts? <laughs> Pain sounds like something one of you three should experience. <laughs> I have three body marks. <laughs> okay, it goes. All right. And she puts the notebook away, and she what? kind of... Wait. Okay. <laughs> what if we wait and see if she comes back to find us? And then it says something like, happy now. <laughs> <laughs> um... Like, do we see anything else, or is this the only thing that's down there in the tunnel? It's this doorway. Now, uh, now that she's gone, that weird eerie glow is—it's just the, just my, the, lamp. just your lamp. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. says, "Well, she like takes out a pocket watch and looks at it, and she says, how much time do we think Gaffney has?' That's the question. Hmm. We don't even know if she saw her mom. I wonder where the door read when Gaffney went through it. Yeah, if they did. Is there any other doorways in the room? No, that's the only doorway. Um, Florian says, I'm going to leave this here with one of you. She hands it to Thaddeus. (laughs) And then she says, "Um, I am going to give it a try. Let's tie a rope that rope to you first before you go in. Okay. So we can pull you back. She ties it on her waist. She straightens her collar, 
and she walks through. Okay. Um, as Florence walks through, what the three of y'all see as she goes through is the she walks in, on, and basically the moment that she's past the archway fades into opaque, and once it's opaque, severs the rope. Well. <laughs> the half that y'all one? had falls. Um, Florence, what is... Need, you need you to tap into your backstory. Okay. Time for some improv. What's, uh, a, what's a painful memory you remember? Oh, gosh. A painful memory of mine. We already know this. Well, yeah, when the soldier um, that I tried to save was dragged into the pit by um, the hairy arm of some kind of goat-like demon that smiled at me as I took him. Okay, what was happening like in the moments leading up to that crucial moment? We were in the middle of a battle. Mm -hmm. It was in the mountains, the snowy mountains. Mm -hmm. It was a foggy... Uh, afternoon, so all you could see was flashes and hear men screaming as they died. There was a, a kind of a copse of trees, like a little forest to the side. One of my men went down, the man who was eventually dragged into the pit. Mm -hmm. I, being a medic, grabbed him. He was screaming in pain, incoherent, and dragged him to the side into the copse of trees. There was a stark trail of blood in the snow um, left behind as I dragged him. Okay. And there I tried to administer uh, emergency first aid. Yeah. Okay, so um, as you, Pat, from your perspective, as you walk through the gateway, the it's like inky black, hard to see past the gateway. You walk in, and the moment you pass that gateway, the ink, it's like you've walked kind of through like a dark veil. And as you walk through the, like the black, it gets right up to you, and it literally feels like you're kind of, it's kind of brushing against your face. And then the brushing is suddenly like tree branches, and you've stepped into like a cold, wintry setting. You're on the edge of a mountain, and there's bullets flying, and people are screaming, and there's gunfire. And uh, in front of you is that wounded man, and he's screaming, he's screaming, Floyd, McCoy, McCoy, help! And he's like reaching up for you. Um, I, um, I would say that I immediately forget everything that I was where I just was, and in the panic of an instinctual reaction. Um, you know, drain of color, immediately in a cold sweat, start to shake, but the instinct to help kicks in. So I maybe full heartedly jump in, and I'm like padding around. My uh, soldier first aid is not where it was back in the day, so I'm shaken by that, but then I grab for my medical kit on my satchel and pull it out and start trying to say, um, it's okay, Stevens, it's okay. And I try and start trinketing mm -hmm. his leg over to get a shot. I'm cold, McCoy. McCoy, it's so cold. I'm really cold, McCoy. Look at me, Stevens. You're going to be okay. Remember your training. It's okay. Talk to me. Tell what are you going to do after this battle? You're going to tell my kids. Tell my kids that I love them so much. You're going to tell them, Stevens. What are you going to do after this battle? What are you looking for? What are you going to eat? I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat fried, fried fish. Fried fish, asparagus. That's, That's a weird pear. Wait, <laughs> um, I don't know. Mashed potatoes. What are you gonna do after that? Um, uh, I'm gonna pl I'm gonna play with my kids. I'm gonna play games with my kids. Um, I can see that the artery is nicked, and so I'm trying to stop it, but it's a really bad wound. Mm -hmm. And I say, "What are your kids' names? Tell what? Are, tell me their names." Well, uh, there there's Benny, there, Benny, and he's Benny's four, and he's got a lot of energy. Um, and there's, there's Caroline, <clears throat> Caroline's nine, she's a handful, um, they're not gonna like that I fry up some fish, but he hates fish. <laughs> um, uh, she says, uh, that's good, Stevens, you're doing real good, what else? Um, uh, we might go to the park, we might, uh, try out the, and he kind of fades off, because there's this weird creaking in the distance. And um, there's, we see this like kind of rumble almost, it sounds like it could be an avalanche even. Um, but this crack, you can see it as snow sort of seeps in, comes along the ground towards this guy. And then that crack, sharp red light shoots up from this crack. And um, 
the ground just starts to part. Um, what are you doing in this moment? So suddenly I remember that I've been here before. And it almost instinctual, I kind of like lay over top of Stevens and like panic for a second and uh, almost try to like grab him and like scoot him back, even though I know I'm hurting him with his wound, like staring panicked, wide eyed at the gap. And then I remember that I have a knife <laughs> with me. That's one of my equipment. Can it be a gold knife or is like not a special one, but just like a regular gold pocket knife? that I have, or is that, would that be too unusual? No, sure, sure, sure. Okay, so I have a gold knife okay. with my rope. Great. Um, and also, and we get, just to be, so we're tracking right, we get three equipment pieces, so once okay. we have three, then that's... So that's, that's it for me. Okay. Um, so it's not, I, when I say pocket knife, I mean more like a dagger mm -hmm. that I have. In your pocket. In my pocket, yeah, pocket. a pocket dagger. Um, I pull it out, and I uh, step in front like kind of leap in front of Stevens uh, and even move closer to the edge of the crack holding the knife. Maybe futilely, but I'm going to try and defend Stevens if I can. Yeah, absolutely. So this crack is bigger and Stevens is now like looking up at it and <gasps> like he's, he's getting freaked out as what in the world is going on. And then just as the crack's not even almost big enough, and it's like these fingers start to kind of force their way through the crack. I stabbed them. <laughs> you, the the hand retracts. Um, you hear this loud, like roaring, like noise from from deep below. And I say, "There's more where that came from, you son of a bitch!" <laughs> oh! And then the crack gets bigger and bigger, <laughs> and then um, the hand suddenly rockets up and it's 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 a hand it's this forearm it's reaching so far up until just past the elbows all the way above this crack and you see this you're looking up at this huge hand and it's coming down towards the two of you and right before it hits we're going to return to the chamber with the mm. original um uh who who's next through the archway slash what, do you what does that say it's, now right so the wall has gone opaque because we still have the book yes mm. The archway is um, spinning, spinning, spinning around the wall, um, and it's back to pain. All right, it's time for a really brave person to go up next. Nice. <laughs> Wait, I, I can. You, you have a score already, right? We both. Well, yes, he's got a couple. Okay, Wait, yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take, take it. I need to take it. Try for a brave person. I need to take it for the team. Uh, I'll go through. <laughs> okay. So, you walk through, and from everyone else's perspective, the moment you pass the archway, wall goes opaque. Um, I'm sorry. You... What's, <laughs> a, what's a painful memory you have, Wade? Oh, gosh. I'm not good at improv. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, this is not something from a backstory, but that's fine. That's okay. Uh... Oh, okay, yeah, it can be. Uh, yeah, okay, so when I was a kid, of course, my parents were very much in the culty family, um, and so there was a lot of painful memories of doing, drawing blood for myself to use for um, different sacrifices. There was one instance where um, I ended up having to cut really, really deep into my hand with lots of pain um, as my parents encouraged me to Know, try to attune to a specific magical item that required a lot of blood offering. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you uh, step through this inky blackness, and again, it's like it's kind of rushing over you, and then as it rushes over you, it's suddenly like curtains, and you've walked through like a, um, it's like a like an old old fashioned like bead curtain over a doorway, and you've okay. walked into this this old living room space and there's um, the lanterns have been extinguished apart from this ring of candles that's on the like a like a circle in the middle of the floor okay and there are uh, six people around the circle sitting around the circle and they all have um, jet black robes the robes on the um, the backs of the robes there's like a like a red handprint that kind of like drips down the backs of the robes um, 
and everyone's in this circle. And one of the hooded figures like looks over, um, and it's your mom. And <laughs> I know it actually is. It's your mother. Sorry, sorry. Oh. And she's really. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> no, your mom. Sorry. It's yeah. your mother. Oh. I'm so sorry, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Painful memory. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> painful. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so burned. I, when, when, when I lock eyes with my mother, I immediately am reminded of, oh, this is deeper than just a single cut. This was the ritual in which my parents died at. Yeah. Um, and your mom, uh, she extends a hand to you, and she says, it's time to help mom, sweetie. Oh, gosh. I don't want to do this. <laughs> This is me actually saying that. I, yeah, just, yeah. I don't want to do this again. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then she the she smiles bigger. She it's it's as if she's trying to encourage you. And then one of the other hooded figures looks over. It's your dad. <laughs> That's not as funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, father. Yeah, <laughs> sir. He says, son, your mom asked you for help. I I I uh, immediately. Uh, just as McCoy had, I, I feel as if I just lost my memory and I immediately snapped into uh, this realm and I, I go, yes sir, yes, I'm here to help, I'm here to complete the ritual. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you walk over to your mom and your mom takes your hand in her hands and she smiles like encouraging, she's like looking up at you and she takes like a small like pearl handled knife from her belt and it'll just take a minute to be and she does a long, like, slow cut across your hand. And then she turns your hand, you're doing great. And she pours it into just a little bowl. And then she places the bowl in the middle of the circle. And um, she says, okay, you can go play with your siblings now. And uh, she turns back to the center. And, um, and then your dad has this sort of, it's a weird little, um, it's like a small lantern, but the flame inside is a, is a very bright purple flame. And he leans it over, and he um, leans it just close enough that then the, the, the bowl kind of ignites in this, this sharp, um, kind of purpley white flame. And um, as you step back, then they, they begin chanting, what do you do in this moment? Do you, do you stay? Do you step out? What do you... Uh, I'm going to stay. Yeah, I'm, I'm more... Uh more intrigued than anything to see where this goes. Sure. Um, so you're here, you're in the room. This flame is, is kind of getting taller and taller and it's almost like spiraling as it goes up higher and higher. And uh, your parents are not looking at you anymore. They're focused on the center. They've linked hands and they're chanting over and over again. And, it, and it's a language that, that you at this age, you just have no idea what this is, but you kind of have this this cursive knowledge of you've been exploring a lot now. You've, you've been on adventures. You've been in Candela. Like, you know that this is like old fair like chant that they're going through and they're working through and they're they're chanting and they're chanting and they're saying these things and and um, the walls start, kind of feel like they're shaking and and um, it feels like the room isn't steady and and then suddenly your mom kind of ah! and like one of her earrings has kind of gone into this this flame um, and uh, as the flame gets kind of taller and taller and now it's like the the top of the flame is almost at the the roof of the ceiling is this kind of gets sucked in and and um she really quickly kind of undoes her other earring and right as she does that it gets sucked in um and then uh your dad uh his his glasses fly off his face and they go into the into the fire and uh everyone seems like they're kind of having a hard time like staying seated um but more and more things like loose things on the walls and the ceiling they're getting sucked into this like uh pillar of flame um and uh, suddenly, like, the cultists, they're, they're, they look like they're even trying to unlink their hands, but they can't. Like, they're all stuck. Um, and then you see that the, them seated down are just kind of, like, getting pulled closer to this flame. And the chanting kind of gives way to, like, they're not yelling, they're screaming. Like, they're kind of, like, um, and your mom, like, as everyone gets closer and closer, like, she turns and she starts to say, wait. But, like, halfway through that, they are, like, consumed into, like, it doesn't look possible, but they get pulled into this fire um, and then the moment that everyone is in this fire the, the fire expands out and your your vision is just filled with kind of purpley white fire um, and as that happens um, we're back in the chamber. Oh.
Well, bum dum dum. What does the door read now? Now, I'll tell you what the door reads. Bane. Uh, now the door reads, uh, peace. Oh, come on. What the heck? You could use some of this. I mean, the door could you need some of this. You want me to go? I don't think it's my time. You can go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I walk back, and I run, and I get on my knees, and I slide through the door. <laughs> cool. Peace. On the stone. <laughs> cool. Slide through. Door goes opaque. It starts to spin from Thaddeus' perspective. From um, uh, Ox's perspective, you are knee sliding into a peaceful memory. What's the time that you felt like you were this at peace? Crap. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go through my parents' dying. Trauma, trauma! <laughs> Um, I would say that it would probably go to walking through uh, the gardens with my grandfather Aldrich, listening to music like this. Yeah. So on summer vacation with my grandfather Aldrich, walking through gardens and him um, probably showing me like little trinkets from uh, the history department at school and then pointing out buildings and Mm -hmm. giving me history lessons and telling me stories of Mm -hmm. like explorations that he did and stuff but just very like enthralled in in the moments with him. Yeah. Um, Have a taffy. So... (laughs) (laughs) Stay alive! Uh, (laughs) I mean, so, four hands, and then he smooches them. <laughs> he's, just, he's just living it up, and we're going to stage. Ox, how old are you, would you say? Um, uh, nine, ten. Okay. Um, have you seen Gladiator 23? Yeah. <laughs> you know that, like, scene the of field? Like, with the with hand the field? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So that's kind of what you emerge through, is this, like, uh, very colorful, but they're these, these tall, very, like, very bright um, electric blue flowers, and you kind of step out of this these unusual flowers, and you're holding your your grandfather Aldrich's hands. This way, my boy, I've got quite the show to see. Wait, I've got quite the show to show you. <laughs> For you to see. For you to see. There it is. There's the sentence. He says all this out loud. He walks you over, um, and it's like a a bird bath um, in the middle of this garden. <coughs> Ordinary bird bath, wouldn't you say, my boy? Yes. <laughs> just wait, just wait. Uh, and then a a bird that has like a lizard's head lands on this on this bird bath and just kind of starts lapping at the water. Amazing, isn't it, my boy? We found these in a cage down in the old fair ruins. Perfectly fine. You would have thought it and died. But no. It's perfectly well and enjoying the water. What a sight! <laughs> and he's just beaming at this <laughs> lizard bird in the bird feeder. What are you doing? Uh, I would say I let go of his hand to get a little bit closer to it. Um, but I don't go too quickly, obviously, to watch it. And, uh, yeah, just kind of mm-hmm. get closer to see... If just its head is a lizard, or if it has like a lizard tail or lizard claws or mm-hmm. things like that, just trying to soak in an animal that I've never seen before. Yeah. Um, you know, there are more wonders than just this down in the ruins of Old Fair. When you're a little older, you can join me on my journeys. I would love that. Can you tell me more? Oh, oh boy, howdy can I! <laughs> And then um, he kind of like pulls around this satchel and he kind of opens it up and he starts to show you these little like shards of like pottery. And it's like, we found this in a temple deep below the surface of South Soffit. And then he, he pulls out like a long um, emerald like uh, staff. Like it's just like a long, um, more, maybe more, almost more like a wand. Is this a wand? Or is it just decor? <laughs> <laughs> and then he comes back in his, his satchel and, and then he just like continues just like showing you yeah. trinkets and things and, and every single trinket has its own like unique story about the place where they found this or the random you know. Um 
Is this uh, memory before or after the incident with your mom? Before. Um, <laughs> the, real, <laughs> the real incident with your mom. Um, cool. So as yeah. your um, your grandfather is uh, showing you all these different things, then you hear kind of like off in the distance a woman's voice call like, Ox! Yes? <laughs> Come on inside, it's time for dinner now. Oh, can I have a few more minutes? No, you spent enough time with your grandfather. I'll drink. And then, um, I'll drink. Well, we better get inside. You know how she gets. <laughs> <laughs> Very reasonable, though, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and then Aldrich kind of takes you by the hand, and he starts to lead you um, back towards the house. And you, you get up to this, this um... Um, I guess you're visiting your grandfather, so it's the same house that we visited recently. Um, but in the doorway, there is your mom. And she's very clear-eyed. She's not um, vacant. She's not detached. Um, she's just standing there. She's got an apron on, and her hands, she's still kind of like clearing away some flour from whatever she was preparing inside. Um, and she gives you a smile, and she kind of steps back and makes space for the two of you to walk through the door. And... As you walk through that door back into the home, about to have a meal with your grandfather and your mother and your father, um, we fade back to the chamber with Thaddeus all alone. Maybe still on the floor. <laughs> he sees that. And I brought the light with me, so it's pitch black. <laughs> to me in the door. What do we got? What do we got? We are looking at. I'll tell you. Whoa. Gunfire, apparently. Um, peace, again. Your peace as well. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. He's well, sort of the stick over here. Punch Knox, man. Peace. Yeah, peace, boys. Whatever, we can take it. <laughs> yeah, I'm as tough. As I yeah. decipher peace, I just kind of give a... <sighs> Very well, then. And I close the book, and I tuck it in, and then limp my way in. And <laughs> crawl in the doorway. <laughs> yeah. Uh sensation of stepping through a, a dark veil, what is your memory? I you hear the last couple of biting remarks from some peers at the university kind of throwing me out and yelling things like um, you know, conspiracy theorist and a fool and um, like you're no longer welcome here, things like that and he like kind of hangs up some of his more official attire from the university means walking through the campus and then as he's walking through you see this younger guy uh, bright eyed kind of looking up towards the sky, he's got uh, like a leather satchel out and he's just like pulling things out and then um, kind of almost like a light jog to him as he then eventually goes into the library and then starts comparing different um, pieces of these artifacts and things into different books and then he ends up laying out like four or five different books and he's looking at these artifacts and studying old fare um, and uh, yeah that is just kind of like brightens up and then uh, puts his hand on his shoulder and says what are you looking at here and you can then kind of recognize that Ox looks up and he's just like oh just so, some remnants from my grandfather that I'm kind of studying into and um, Thaddeus just kind of smiles and looks down and says let me let me look into this with you too I'm curious as well uh, Hmm. Don't want to go back and forth a little bit? Try some role playing? <laughs> that just walk in and ask you about your artifacts? First time we met. How old am I? Uh, I, I imagine maybe shortly after the incident with your mom and you start to get involved with the okay. kind of adventuring and stuff? Probably like early 20s, I would say. Yeah. Nice. So you're studying these artifacts, and Thaddeus just walked in and put a hand on your shoulder and is inquiring about what you're looking at. Do I, what, like, what am I looking at? Whatever you want to be looking at. Uh, maybe, maybe a long, <laughs> maybe a long emerald wand, yeah, no. um, <laughs> or maybe a decorative artifact. Nobody Whoa, knows. Circle. Have you seen? Have you? Have you done much studies of the maps of of Old Fair? I have looked at a couple, and I've been very interested to go down there myself. I think that there's a very deep and, and rich history to be unearthed there, and answers about what's going on with our world today. Answers. That's what I'm looking for. With everything that's gone on with my mom lately and not knowing what this is doctors not having answers or anything when those are the people that you would expect to know what's going on hmm. I felt like this is a place that I could find some sort of hope or stepping stones that could get me to more knowledge oh, of course uh, 
our courage is a, a, a humble one. We, we, we dive deeply and bravely into information others want to close their eyes to or plug their ears from, but I think that you have, a, you have an openness to you to, to look where no one else is looking. So often it seems like people want to forget the past, but I find that that's where we can find the most answers. Of course. So I think hopefully these books can lead me somewhere in Old Fair or lead me to other historians who have maybe dealt with this type of stuff before with my mom. She's not responsive, but it doesn't seem like a, a modern hypnosis or whatever it could be. It seems like something from the old times. I don't quite know what's going on for sure with your mother, but what I've been able to learn so far is that this old magic, these things of the, the world behind us is a very volatile thing, but in the right hands can be very powerful and helpful, but too much playing around with things you don't understand can get very dangerous. The fear of losing my mom is greater than any fear of whatever might lie below in the streets of Old Fair. I will join you in this if you would take on a, a, a lifetime devoted to figuring things out. I'm sure you and my grandfather can help me out a lot. I hope to talk with him under his roof one day. <laughs> <laughs> For only like five minutes and then no longer on the roof. It sounds like a safe place. Yeah. And as y'all continue to look down over these artifacts, we um, slowly pan away and we pan to the archway, but it's this side of it. There um, are uh, different rooms and um, um, these uh, uh, this this room is is much bigger um, but now it has the four of y'all on either side of it and y'all that uh, it, it was a weird thing where you all went in single file but like somehow kind of <clears throat> jostled out at the same time like mm -hmm. there was something strange about like the timing and the and the cadence but um, y'all are now um, yeah, y'all are now past that experience and now in this this new space. Uh. <laughs> Florence is like, like, goes, ah! it's like slashing. Mm. Her hair is crazy. <laughs> and then she kind of falls like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm just like sobbing and I see everyone, I see everyone else I'm like, I'm not crying. <laughs> it's fine. What do we see? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so now um, there is, it's all kind of a long entry chamber. Um, and uh, um, it looks like there are like side passages kind of on either way of this entry chamber, but there is a, a large, um, kind of like opulent, um, has like different gemstones worked into it, uh, doorway, big double doors, and one of them is kind of creaked open, and also kind of like on its hinge a little bit, um, and, uh, your, um, Florence, your, your arm wound just kind of like tingles a little bit, but, um, it's just for a moment, um, and it's just kind of like with your eyes on the door. Um, but then the kind of the sensation goes away, and there are, um, yeah, there there are like runes again inscribed over this this door. It doesn't look like they're on like a mobile archway this time. There's just kind of like runes along the top of this this archway. Florence kind of like stands with her hands on her knees for a second, kind of like collecting herself. And then she stands up and she's kind of looking at the archway and she moves over towards Thaddeus with a notebook, who has a notebook, but on the way she kind of claps um, Wade on the shoulder and says, all right there, Anderson? No. <laughs> Chin up, man. There's some pain. And she kind of walks over to Thaddeus and Ox and says, 
and she starts to say, are you guys okay? But then she sees that you clearly are. She's like, <laughs> what did the arch say for you guys? <laughs> I was reminded of why I got into this again. I'm assuming it wasn't a painful reason. <laughs> he just looks over her box and kind of smiles. Not so much. Cray, how sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have the notebook? Yes. <laughs> she said, she said. She's in a tizzy, clearly. Mm. Um, I found some interesting notes about <laughs> Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, wait, do you actually say that? I do. Okay. Um, she's kind of like fiercely flipping through the pages to translate the... She says, what did you find? Uh, I was just a little interested about this other circle. Uh, John Ronson said, I believe I found where Dr. Karina Sprite and her circle met. But when I looked at this list of circles, Dr. Karina Sprite is not listed as a member or a leader of, of any of these. So I was just curious about either this rogue circle or, or maybe the one he said he didn't have any information on. Um, it was the, the squared shoulders. I think, this is Rachel saying, mm -hmm. I think wasn't that the, the circle from Seasway that went missing? Circle of the silver or something. Silver that line. that silver was line. in... Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was in the. We found. She's the one that we found. Like that's like the last page, right? That he. Mm -hmm. That was the woman that we found dead in the. Okay. In the so she's a member of yes. Emperor's mm -hmm. rights. Mm -hmm. Got it. So yeah. I say all that. Yes. Good. Um. <laughs> well. Mystery solved. Um. She says. Well, Thaddeus, you aren't completely useless when it comes to this kind of thing. And she kind of looks at you. <laughs> and then she says, if you have any other insights, I would love to hear them. And then she translates the door. Um, so, so the uh, doorway says, um, it says, uh, Empress Ioning, the everlasting, look upon her works and rejoice. Sarah! Um, you don't hear anything from Sarah. You, you do hear a familiar creak. And it's a creak that you remember from the last time you were down here. Mm -hmm. um, sort of metallic, robotic creak. And then just a little thud, again, on the other side of this kind of cracked door. Is there another one? My glove's in my bag, so I'm not too worried about it. I also have explosives. So, <laughs> nice. I mean, it's going to take down some ruins, but we can blow it up. How about we stick a pin in that? <laughs> <laughs> Last resort. <laughs> uh, is there any other doors besides the one that's like any other way? Um, you're like at a, at a long sort of kind of entr entrance hallway thing, I guess, and so there's other chambers that go off, like, offshoots, um, but the door that you're looking at, the big double doors, are just kind of, like, opposite end of this 30-foot space, so, well, uh, there's two doors left, two doors right before that, but it's, you know. We're not just down here to blow things up, we're here to look for any information that we can about Iamin and, uh, maybe rescue Gaffney. Uh, or uh, anything else about these old alchemists as well. So why don't maybe you look for signs of where Iamine and Gaffney ended up while uh, you can maybe look for uh, any remnants or artifacts around from um, old, old times and uh, maybe we see what's behind this door. Well, I'm for that plan, but should we perhaps let the one with the glove test it? Yeah, yeah. Well, on this side of the door first. Yeah, keep that thing away from me. <laughs> Here's what I will say. These clock creatures, whatever they're made of, we're obviously here to protect the Empress. And I would say that means that they're here to protect her daughter, Sarah, as well. So maybe Sarah can communicate with them and protect us. Mm. I have the glove if I need it, but we could learn something from these machines as well. And McCoy kind of puts her hands on her hips and looks at Thaddeus and then she says, where do you think Sarah's room would be? Is there any indication of that something that looks like a living area? 
like one on one of the hallways down? Um, I mean, the the four doors, the two and two, they are pretty indistinguishable from each other. They are they're like half the size. The archway across from you is like this huge floor to ceiling archway. The the doors on the side are like pretty average sized door frames with no like immediately discernible markings on them. Shall we try the one on the left? Oh boy. Is that the open one? Well, not the one. <laughs> not the, the one with the creek. Because you're saying that we should try and find Sarah first, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we try the small door to the left? I'll take the lead. Um, and I would say, have that thing ready. <laughs> I don't put it on yet, because last time it gave me a body mark, and I'm at three. Oh, no. But I've got it ready to go. Oh, wait. I don't have any scars yet, so I don't mind. You're at three. I don't have any scars yet. That's true. <laughs> I mean, what do you want scar? me to? Is this a moment of calm? Yeah, we're, I mean, we're fine. Like, I have it, and if I need to use it, then I can. Okay, because um, I do have patch up right. that I could try and... But you have to use your things, don't you? Yeah, I have to use two drives. Right, that's a lot. Yeah. Okay. Shall we? Um, great, so you go into the first door on the left, um, and you walk into... Um, it almost seems like... Uh, just like a, a strangely normal office space. Um, there's, um, I guess, the ancient ruins version of an office space. There's like a, there's like a slab that um, has there's some random like blackened leathery scraps of something that's rotted away for from you know centuries and centuries. There's a little wooden or a um, like a stone kind of seat behind it. And then a bookshelf that that's uh, made of stone, but again, that just whatever was on this bookshelf is is ratted away. And then um, on the wall, kind of behind that that large uh, table, um, you see a um, very elaborate um, kind of painting map of a city town that you really don't recognize. It doesn't. It's, it's kind of hard to tell what this town is. Um, it's not anything that's familiar to you, um, but over this town there is kind of drawn like a larger version of um, like one of these figures that you saw from the mural the last time you were in Old Fair, and it's sort of like what was in your journal, um, and this drawing of this person, their arms are spread wide, and it, it, uh, the, it, the color's faded, it seems like it could be purplish or something, um, but there are... Uh, runes over um, this person that you can use a journal and you can translate and see that it just says uh, Gani G-A-N-N-I um, That just goes as what enter this room Smart kid <laughs> Gani, that's one of the alchemists um, Quick quick survey of the room anything um, You do not see anything of note in this room Next room? In my uh, studies of old fair and stuff, would I know or have read any children's songs? Any tunes or anything like that? Um, maybe just like... Like something that I could whistle. My goal yeah, is to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. can I maybe whistle a tune that she heard when she was a kid that yeah. her parents sang or something like that to... I know that it could risk the machines, but mm -hmm. they're aware that I don't think that it would do anything. So my goal is to yeah. try and get the attention of her besides just saying her name. Um, I would say that like you, it's very reasonable that you may have found like old like uh, old fairing like nursery rhymes and stuff. You wouldn't know what the tune they're sung to, but you could pick a tune that you've heard from your own childhood or something. Right. Yeah. So I just kind of lightly whisper that, not with the outward intent of seeking anything out, but with the goal of kind of just. Sure. Having a backtrack to us walking and see if it maybe draws her out or something. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Um, cool. So uh, you do that whistling, and again, you do not hear a child, but you do hear another creak, followed by another thud, and another creak, followed by another thud, and then you hear a very low, deep, like, of like a huge door back outside your chamber kind of getting opened and then that kind of creak thud 
creak thud continues, and it sounds like it's getting closer towards where you've, you're whistling the chamber you're all in right now. Should we try the glove now while we're on this <laughs> side of the door? I'm gonna um, pull it out. I'm not gonna put it on yet because I'll take a mark, which means I'm probably gonna fall down. Oh, well, let me. Should I try and patch you then? Or should, or should I, I hand it to somebody else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take it. I mean. Wait. I wouldn't put it on yet. What is. Uh, what was required of the glove? Nothing. I just Nothing. put it on it's and, and we didn't have to. Okay, well, I don't have any marks right now, so yeah. I'll take it. I'll hand it to you and then I'll uh, gently this time, not yell Sarah, mm-hmm. but say something along the lines of like, um, Sarah, can you help us with your friends? Mm-hmm. Um, at, at the creek, that creek, that gets much, much, it, it kind of picks up speed. And then you, it stops right before anything kind of gets past the doorway. But then slowly you get like the kind of more light creakings and groanings. And then this automaton face just kind of comes into <laughs> view from the top of the doorway as it kind of like leans down in to kind of, and it's far too big to come into the doorway, but it sees you now. And it just is frozen there. Just watching you all. Okay. Okay. Does it try to reach in? Uh, you. Uh, in my brain, y'all were far enough from the door that if it had tried, it wouldn't have been able to reach you. But it, it seems like it's like ready to the moment one of you is within arm's reach. It would go in. I look around at everyone, and then seeing no visible objections, mm-hmm. I put on the glove. Cool. And go. Ow! <laughs> yeah. So you, you'll take a bleed. Uh. A bleed, a bleed or body? body? Bleed. Oh. Yeah, it's a magical, magical bleed item. Okay. Um, Did you have any of those? No. I have no marks of any kind. Okay. All good. Okay. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> well, I do have a scar thing. <laughs> yes. I have two. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That was. It was already uh, not moving, and it continues to not move. Um. What I do? I remember that you like commanded it. I just. I didn't say anything. I just held it up to it. Okay, I... Keep the glove hold, in between us and that thing. I hold the glove up, and I take a step forward to see how it reacts. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't seem to move. If anything, it kind of, like, lifts just a little bit, almost like it's, like, making sure you have room to leave. Okay, I continue moving toward it and observing. Mm-hmm. Does it get out of the way? Um... Yeah, with your hand outstretched, uh, like, it just kind of, like, as you get closer to it, it continues to straighten, and now it's almost like it's a guard posted at the door instead of anything trying to, like, get at you. Um, like just... I try to gesture to it as if to say, move back. Does it move back, or does it just... It, it steps back wherever you've gestured, yeah. Okay, I send it to the other side of the room. Not out, but just to the other side of the room. Okay. And then walks off and just stands there awkwardly. Okay. Pull out its batteries. Does it, does it fit through the other set of doors? Uh, none of the small ones. It it seems are to there have four sets of doors. There are two and two on either side of this, so, okay. across from each other, and then the big door in the middle. The big door is now fully open, so it seems to have come out from that. What do we see through the big door? Um, it's too dark to tell. But we heard two sets of thumps and creaks, so there might be two of them. Pocket light. Yeah, come on, pocket light. Hmm? I have a light with me. Um, I say, all right, what do we do? I'm focused on this. Y'all decide what we do. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Are we going through each of these smaller rooms? Yeah. Uh, Let's just peek into the next one before we go through the big one. You stay there. Yeah, I'll stay here. Try and figure that thing out. Can I do a cartwheel? (laughs) Okay, I'm observing the body language of this. (laughs) What do I perceive? Um, Okay, so y'all are just going to go room to room? Us three walk into the other, the rooms on the other. The small doors on the other. So I can see in, like, while I'm still Mm -hmm. on the main hall. Okay. Um... So as y'all walk into um, the, maybe the, the, as you could imagine, each room has a similar setup to it. Uh, The only two things of note, um, 
the other room, the across, immediately across the hall, it was another bust. Um, the, the city is not recognizable. The man is not recognizable. The rune is spelled out Lunex, L-U-N-E-X. Um, and uh, then, um, but then the next over the the last two doors, maybe maybe slightly more interesting. Um, this uh, town is pretty clearly what is today Seasway. Mm-hmm. Um, it's pretty apparently Seasway. And then um, Florence, if you go in, you would uh, this, I mean, it's a very rudimentary sketch, but it, because it is larger and because the whole point of this mural is depicting this man, um, you do actually recognize um, this ghost that you've been seeing as the man that's kind of etched on this. Um, and the runes over this say Rebus, R-E-B-I-S. Okay. Rebus Macintyrus. <laughs> um, I pull out the... Or I say, there was something in Shadow's journal about this. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Great. It doesn't have the names of the alchemists, but I think it would have placed what yeah. alchemist was where. But this is Rebus, I guess. So I don't know if we recognize mm-hmm. the other places, but... Um, yeah, and then the last one, uh, again, like, not recognizable, it says, uh, Pollock is the runes over that, P-O-L-I-K. Um, the only strange thing is that there is, uh, a small, very pristine book left on the, uh, the desk of this particular chamber. Um, and as you investigate it, it's just like a... A pocket new fair constitution, just like a, a book of a book of laws and rules about not old fair but new fair. Um, if there's if the shadows theory is correct that the alchemists are still alive, could it be that Pollock is up and alive and well in new fair today and has some interest in? Learning the laws of the land? It's just a theory. I don't know what's going on down Could here. Could Pollock be Elias? Could be, or... Well, Keelum was the head alchemist. He cer- Elias certainly does seem to be the head, but mm-hmm. it could be. We don't know who these other alchemists are. We have no idea what they look like. It could be anyone. It could be Gaffney. I, Why would Iomine attack him? Iomine was an enemy of the alchemist, correct? Correct. So yeah, if, if she is attacking Gaffney, then he may be one of the alchemists. No tax dollars at work. <laughs> I have no comment. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. <laughs> okay, well. Well, let us go and see the... The big room. Queen of the Hive. Big womb. Um, okay, so y'all uh, make your way into the main chamber. Um, in the main chamber, uh, as you walk in, you... So it's dark, so you're illuminating it with your lantern, I guess. Yeah, it's um, cool. Theater, so. so, this is a space that as you walk in, uh, Florence, you recognize. This is the throne room that you had a brief memory of mm. being inside of. Um, huge, opulent, beautiful. There's a huge throne in the middle. Um, and the steps are so high up to this throne that the the immediate light of this lantern isn't quite enough to like fully illuminate what's even up there. But you can tell that you're in from like your immediate surroundings um, a very like opulent space. Um, and now that you're in, you can almost hear, like, quiet sobbing. I tell them from my memory that what I recognize this room as. Okay. The sobbing it sounds like it's coming from in front of you, probably, like, up the stairs of the room. Sarah, is that you? The sobbing cuts out. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Gorge! <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. No Mayor Gaffney? Uh, um, uh, hello? I mean, I, I, 
I mean, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm here, Daphne. And then it kind of like devolves back into something. I look at, I'm still facing backwards, like, looking at the... Um, I walk towards um, him with the light. I kind of look, look at my shoulder to see. Okay, you, as you walk, you slip a little bit, and you see that you've, like, slid in a little streak of just, like, blood that's on the ground. And beside the blood, there's, like, a ripped half of, like, a lavender, like, blazer. Is he wearing lavender? Yeah. Yeah. It was his signature. <laughs> Are you hurt, Mayor? Uh, there's no answer. He like the sobbing just kind of got more hysterical. Um, um, I whisper. Like, oh, 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 oh. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm a fan. Of his name. <laughs> I whisper. Be careful. If he, mm. we don't know if he's the alchemist. What were the two names that were left? Um, Pollock. It was in Pollock's chamber where we found the laws. Hmm. It was, we found Rebus was Seasway. The other one was Lennox, I think. Lunex. Um, Rebus and Ghani are the ones that we found. I think, did we find Pig? Two, I can't remember. Uh, you found uh, Rebus, Ghani, Pollock, and Lunex. Uh, Rebus, Ghani, oh, my bad hand Pollock, right. oh, Pollock, and Lunix. Okay, yeah. the only one missing is Keelum. Okay. The, supposedly the leader of the office. Yeah, and the new book was in whose Pol- chamber? It was in um, Pollock. Pollock's. Okay. Um, I don't go much closer. Can I see him at all with my light yet? Um, if you're at the foot of the stairs now, then you see, like, that this blood continues up the stairs. And there's, there, like, the rest of the pieces of the suit seem to be kind of, like, strewn up the stairs. Um, Wait, what is he currently wearing? We can't see up to the throne yet. He was um, he's crying in the throne. Crying up in the throne. In a sunder robe. The, 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 those are all, yeah, discarded. And then right before the throne, we can see there's, like, something kind of bunched up at the foot of the throne, like, not... Like just out of view, mm-hmm. where you it's, um, it's probably it's probably one of the other robots. I'm gonna. So I walk backwards towards you with the glove. Well, I, I mean, I say I I look back too, and I look at y'all, and I say something's not right, and I gesture towards the automaton just to make it come closer. Well, it came from in this room. Right, but now I'm in control of it, so right. I want it closer. So I pull it. I, um, I say. Mm-hmm. Is he dead? Is it his spirit? Cool. And then the Autoton like dutifully trots back into the room, and then <laughs> I have him like a distance from us, not within ground distance of us, but ready to like help us. So, like, so we'll stay there. He creaks it. I right. say, <laughs> I say, I think we need to see it. <laughs> and I look, I look to y'all, and I say, shall lead lead with the Autoton? Okay. And we'll get by. We just need some light. Okay, I, um, is the automaton glowing? No, uh, it doesn't, it, it's just responding to you. But does it clap, like... does it cast light? Oh, oh, uh, no. Okay. You do it with a light. Um, I say. I don't want to walk up to it, even though she's controlling it. Alright. Should I put it on it? What do you suggest? Do it with the automaton a light so that I can walk up. Okay. okay, I say, worth a try? Now we're thinking of portals. <laughs> I say, all right, shall I try? And I hold up my hand to you for the pocket light. Yeah. And then oh. I look back at y'all and say, well, <laughs> and I walk up to the automaton and I hold. It's got I, a little. I, little I go, I kind of go like this as if to say lower its hand. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it re- knows it's, intention or not. Yeah. So I, again, it's heads like, it's the top of its body is like a weird and then its head is like a globe with like face face paint on the side 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 and the, it kind of like swivels down to kind of look down and it just isn't doing anything for a second almost like it's like processing Re-computing. and then it takes uh, uh, its Maybe. fingers and it picks up the light because <laughs> this thing is massive and now it's got the light kind of pinched in it <laughs> um, put it in the bowl and I say <laughs> alright well done and next step 
And I gesture, and I gesture to everyone else to come behind me, and then I gesture for it to go up the side of the stairs so that it'll hold the light over the mass huddled in front of the throne. Cool. Um, so now it walks up closer to the throne, and, and when it moves up and it illuminates the globe, we can see the whole scene of the stairs and the throne. And huddled at the, the foot of the throne, it, it's hard to describe anything apart from it is a... Is a skin suit. Like it looks like someone has removed all of their skin and it's just kind of like in a pile uh, at the foot of this throne. And then curled up in the throne is still a, a human figure, but it is this strange, like dark, dark, almost royal purple, but darker than that person with no skin, or sorry, with no clothes, no hair. No, um, nothing on it. It looks like it's like still dripping, and it's just like curled up in this throne, and it's crying. Gaffney's signature cries. <laughs> oh, oh <my> God. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what is this? What did they do? My God. I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'm. I'm. At this point, <laughs> Wade is sitting there. Like, I don't want to be in Candela anymore. Wade's still recovering. Wade's like, this is beyond me, and uh, he's gonna he's gonna pull a rifle from his shoulder and just ready for whatever's gonna come. He's preparing himself. Defensive. Does he slam the door? I'm trying to get her out, and she spun around. Amazing. Um, so as he's sobbing, he is just going to. Um, like, curled up in the throne, he points an arm sort of around the throne to some, like, to the back wall behind. This this throne is in the dead center of this chamber, and he's now kind of, like, pointing in the vague direction of, behind me, on the other side of the throne. And and he keep, he keeps crying through that. I gesture, I look at the, you guys and not seeing any objections, I gesture for the robot to move to the back so we can see what's illuminated behind. Okay. Um, in the center of that back wall, far behind the throne, there is a, um, a another uh, doorway. And it's similar to the doorway of the other chambers that have been outside. Similar sized doorway. <coughs> normal human sized. And around that doorway are like the, like, f- like piece by piece removed bits of an automaton, just like strewn about the back wall. Um, Gaffney, what's back there? Um, he... <gasps> she's back! She's back there! And he just, and then he goes back to crying. Is your name Pollock? He... <gasps> and he stops for a second. And he, like... For like the briefest second, when he he like looks up, and he's like eerily like non-emotive. Like he he's been sobbing, but there's like no expression on his face. He looks up at you. Who? <laughs> God. Um. This is well. <laughs> An alchemist. Are you one of the great alchemists of old? Um, and then he almost like remembers himself and then goes back to like curled up and crying again. Um, anything to read into that? Uh, yeah, you, I mean, you can interpret body language. You can do a re-roll. If I would love to. Yeah, go for it. Hello! Hello! All right, I have two and it's a gilded action. Don't, is it worth using a drive to get one more? I think you're right. Is it a low stakes? Mm, low stakes. You're seeing like. Yeah. Well, three is the highest. Three. Um, yeah. So I mean that that so you can't really tell what he's doing with his his body language and um, the laughter. It's starting to get to a weird place where you can't tell if he's laughing or if he's crying. Or sorry, the crying gets to you can't tell if he's laughing or crying at this point. He's just kind of like, oh, 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 kind of going. We can deal with that mess later. I think we have a, 
an interest in what's going on back there. All right, don't turn your back on him. And kind of like skirt around him towards the automaton. Uh, it, it's worth saying also that as the throne was illuminated, um, there are uh, runes. It looked like it looks like someone has scrawled runes over um, like an original like name that was kind of scratched over the throne. So the throne had like a head plate to it, and someone like defaced that with like updated scratches. Um, which, uh, those scratches can be decoded, and they do, in fact, say something I can tell you right now. Okay, at our feet. Um, yeah, so, uh, the scratch across the back of this throne right over Gaffney, it just, in, um, Old Farron runes, just says, to be unabridged is to be cursed. Unabridged? That's what uh, Iomine was trying to accomplish, to achieve immortality. And, and the someone, alchemist wanted to stop her. And someone defaced her work here. Well, more questions than answers. <laughs> shall we? We shall. And then continue skirting towards the room at the back. We do. Um, to be unabridged. Cool, so you get to the room in the back, you kind of walk through the automaton spaces, and it seems like you are, as you get closer to this um, room and you illuminate it with the, or how are you illuminating this? Because your automaton has pinched the light. He can't go through. It's not, he's, it's too big of a doorway for him, or too All small right. for him. Take it back, brother. Take it back, say thank you very much, and I hand it to Ox. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I say, remain here. <laughs> um... Great. Uh, so, as you walk through that, that doorway and you kind of illuminate the hallway further in, you see that you have approached, um, like, again, like, another, like, kind of, like, private chambers. There's, like, so, like, a bench and, like, a what looks like a pot that could have contained something at one point. It's dead now. Um, but it's almost like a foyer kind of area. And there's a few sealed doors... Um, like three or four, and then one of those doors has this negative space person floating by the door, um, and it's just kind of frozen looking up at the door, um, and it's just not, it's not moving, it's not doing anything. <clears throat> Is it the same one that took Gaffney? Mm -hmm. Um, I pause and look at y'all and say, Sarah. And we don't I look think at that's Sarah, though, right? No, but I, I say, should we find Sarah before we try and dispel her? It seems like Sarah might be key to this. Yeah, I'll call for her again. And continue whistling softly. Mm -hmm. um, so with she the whistle, whistle, the negative cre like person rotates towards uh. you. <laughs> And you, all of you hear a voice. It's not like it's spoken aloud. It's like it's in your head. Um, and it just says, can't you leave me in peace? And it's a distinctly feminine voice. Um, um, I say, I believe we met your daughter, Sarah, and she told us to follow her here. Uh, when you say that again, the, the being, like, zooms closer to you and gets very close to you, and that voice is deafening in your brain. And uh, she says, Who tricked you into saying my daughter's name in this place? And the, the shock of that was, it's very loud, you're going to take a brain mark. Whoa. Because she shouted in your mind. No one tricked us. We are curious about the bounds of, of magic to learn what can be unburdened by what has been. I went in there. <laughs> it's all gone. They're all gone. It's, it's underwater. My Sarah is gone. 
Um, I'm gonna try and, in a convincing way, say, I mean, she's not gone. Her spirit is here. But maybe we can help her, and we can help you. Um, I don't believe you. And she starts to float up higher and higher. Um, but then as she starts to do that, then you hear, like, the voice of a little girl that's repeating the whistle that Ox mm-hmm. gave, like, the tune Aww. back. And she pauses. And, um, then the ghost of Sarah comes from, she comes from up behind y'all and, and sort of, she skips into the chamber, skips in with her, um, beside this negative creature. And, uh, she says, you found my room. Um, and this figure floats down, um, and, uh, gets down on it on like one knee in front of this girl and uh, the voice is not in your head anymore but um, you hear the voice spoken out loud Sarah and this negative image is starting to get a little more clear and a little more opaque and it, it's um, it starts to seem more like a discernible like person like this is a this is a woman she has form she has um, actual substance um, and uh, this girl says, hi, Mom. Um, and uh, they're just quiet, and they're looking at each other, and then the, the form kind of tries to embrace this ghost, but it can't because this ghost is opaque, or this ghost is just translucent, and, and it, it, she tries a few times um, and then puts her hands by her side again um, and just says, I'm so sorry, Sarah. And Sarah says, oh, that's okay. I think the metal men are funny. <laughs> and then the, the woman laughs, and uh, she looks up at all of you, and in your head again, you hear, um, please rescue me. And uh, she and the daughter both um, fade away. How, I mean, how? Um, and you just, like, hear, like, the sli- slightest whisper, you must find me before he does. And, um, then she's fully gone. Mm-hmm. And, um, as she fades away, we pan back out of that room, back out of this chamber, we go back out the door of emotions, and we go through another wall, and suddenly we are whizzing through a labyrinth of tunnels, and we're relocating, 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 until we finally reach an old familiar um, wall, uh, it, or an old familiar passageway with a now opened mural. Inside the mural, um, there's a wall. There are four stands with four daggers placed on them. Um, and, uh, there's a man walking into this chamber, and, uh, this man is, of course, Elias Smoke, um, and he walks up to the wall with the four image, or item stands, and he looks up at the, um, the fifth, above those four, there was, like, another Mm -hmm. empty stand, um, and he says... Not as much time as I may have hoped for, but things have accelerated. And he spreads his arm, and his retractable golden blade emerges from his from his hand, and he takes it with his other hand, and just with a little twist, there's like a little click, and the blade detaches from his hand. And then... Seemingly out of nowhere, Elias just sort of floats, and he goes up to this fifth stand, and he places the sword on the stand. There is a a deep internal rumbling, and the wall slowly starts to rise up 
opening a, a new space beyond. We don't see this space, but we do see Elias's face. And he smiles, and he says, It's good to be home. And that is where we will leave off this session of wow. Candela Obscura. Mm-hmm. Whoa. 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 Obscura. Whoa.